Hello, welcome back to another Thunderous production tutorial. I am Jag Thunder, and this is Minecraft. Welcome to part two of my tutorial guide. This is uh, a guide and a tutorial on a multi-floor elevator, or freight elevator, or whatever the hell you want to use it for. Uh, part one consisted of basically uh, basic things about pulleys, gearboxes, um, some s wiring circuits that we'll be using in this tutorial. So if you missed it and you don't really know a lot about redstone and wiring, jump on over there to part one, check it out. It's about 20 minutes long. Uh, I, I expect this tutorial to probably go three parts. I thought at first two, now I'm thinking three. Uh, the first part will just be basic um, wiring, pulleys, gearboxes, and stuff like that. This part here, part two, will consist of the actual construction and most of the wiring. And then part three will probably be wiring in the uh, block detectors for the floors, but we'll see how it goes. I'll try to keep the tutorial moving as fast as possible to uh, keep it from getting too boring and keeping you interested, but yet getting enough information so you can build the son of a bitch. So anyways, if you're just joining us on uh, and you haven't seen part one, and you just want to jump right in and just build this thing without watching part one. This is what we're making. Uh, basically, if you're following my Play With Thunder series, I'm making a UFO. I have a freight elevator in it. And just go watch my videos, dude. Serious. And you'll know what the fuck I'm doing. But for now, we'll just show you what I'm doing. I've got indicator lights uh, for the up and the down. I've switched to change the direction of the up and the down. I also have a brake and a go button. Uh, basically, when the brake is on, the elevator won't move, and I can switch from up to down, take the brake off, and the elevator moves. It stops at each floor, and each floor has two switches. Same thing as above, a go and a brake button, and an indicator light telling you that the brake is on, and also a uh, selector switch. So right now we're going down, and I can switch it, and we can go back up. I'm using the block detectors for the floors to detect the leveling, and I think I realized after I build it that I only need one of these, but we'll continue on with the tutorial, and we'll, we'll probably learn something together. But anyways, it works good. It works great. Let's go over and masturbate. Not really, but let's go check it out. So first off, we need a power supply. There's two ways to power your pulley system, and one is with a windmill, which looks really nice if you're making some kind of a windmill type building and you're just trimming it out and you're putting an elevator inside and number two is using a water wheel system which if you're uh, putting it inside or on a rooftop you can conceal it pretty good and they both work pretty good the advantage one over the other is the water wheel takes less space as you can see the windmill takes approximately and this was a quick guess seven by four by fourteen so it's one two three four five six and the gearbox goes on the seventh space it takes three gear axles and a windmill if you're using the better than wolves mod which you should be by now and you will be able to find the windmill and all the pieces that you need so you don't have to actually craft this shit so anyways um, there's the seventh block it's four wide counting this block or deep and 14 from one end to the other so if you got a lot of room and you're putting this on the like so the side of a building uh, use you know use this one it'll, it'll look better and if you're put, just putting something on the inside we will use the water wheel so we're going to we're going to use the water wheel for this application because ours is more compact it's inside of a structure or a ufo like i have back here in the back so we're using the water wheel and the way to set that up is one block high gearbox sets uh facing our face right now there's four uh triangles pointing to the center this is very important. This has to be set a certain way or your power will not work. These arrows will always face your power supply, which if you watched the first video, you'd know this. Put your first three axles in and set your water wheel. And there again, you'll need a five by five section. And let it close on one end and one block open on the other. Fill the bitch with water and it starts to spin. So now we have power. Once we have power, which that one has power too, you can see by the smoke going up. Now we want to set our gearboxes. And remember, you want the arrows to be facing the power supply. So when you set them, put your back to the supply. 
and if you have a big system that you're putting in the easiest thing to do is make each gearbox point at the very last one that you put in and seeing how we're splitting this into two different ways we're gonna have one going this way and one going this way and then this one's gonna face that one and this one is gonna face this one and this one is going to face that one. And this one is going to face this one. So basically what we're doing is we're splitting the power into two pulleys. Now remember, I told you from the first video that you, whatever you have on one side, you have to have on the other. Now the spacing is different, but I still have two um, or three gearboxes on each side. One, two, three. One, two, three. The spacing can be different but the end result is these two have to be across from each other and um, otherwise if you don't your your platform because you're using two separate pulleys or gearboxes it won't lift evenly so you want to keep everything even so after you get the gearboxes set up you can start on either end it doesn't matter and just start throwing your uh, your axles in you can put these in in any order it doesn't matter because the critical part is done setting up the uh, the gearboxes so I use three here and three here and I here's a little tip for you too when uh, when building this and you'll see as I'm talking the uh, the smoke come ri uh, rises from all the, the gearboxes that lets us know we installed it correctly if you do not have that coming from every box then you did something wrong and double check it anyways the tip here is you want to make this part here um, at least three, maybe even four gearboxes out. You can go as far as you want with this thing. Uh, no more than three axles apart because it will break. But I, I would suggest putting this way out here in your building. That way you have all the room underneath your elevator and also underneath the shaft here, shaft, to, um, to put your wiring. I fucked up several times when I was building mine from underneath. I whacked out the bottom brick, the water came down and just washed away all the redstone and my repeaters and I just took hours figuring out where, what was missing and where I fucked up. So anyways, my advice is to either build this part here out of a different material so that you'll recognize it from underneath or moving it into a, a separate room or compartment in your building so you don't have to con uh, contain water and fuck up problems. The gearboxes the axles will only go in from the outer edges. You cannot go in from the top or the bottom. So we know from my superstructure here in a second that our pulleys will actually be like right here and right here. So in order to get this transferred down, we need to put a gearbox here and a gearbox here. And you have to place them from uh, from the this position looking down. So my, I think my mock-up area has got really, really deep. But anyways, that's that's what you want right here. And yeah, I've got I MC edited it and didn't get it deep enough, or got it too deep. I mean, uh, so anyways, this is what we're doing, and we want the gearbox to be facing up. So just look down, place it up, throw your axles in, uh, put your pulleys in, and then put another axle in. And as long as you've done this correctly. You've got a quick puff of smoke off the pulley, and you're good to go. And we'll be putting rope inside the pulley. If you're using anything else, um, I've got zipline installed. Do not use this fucking rope. Again, wasted time putting the wrong fucking rope in it uh, early one morning. It took about an hour, and my son Tyler came in and said, Dad, why is the rope different? And I was like, holy fucking balls. For the past hour, I've fucked with this and put the wrong damn rope in it. So anyways, you're going to put this rope here in it, and you're going to use, um, depending on the height of your, your structure, is how many pieces of rope you're going to put in it. I just throw 64 in it. It looks like it holds two rolls, so I'm going to say 128 is the maximum block height that your pulleys will go, but I have not tested that, so I'm not sure, but I always throw 64 in, so I've got enough. So anyways, that's how we set up the power system. Let's go over the structure and start putting this bitch together. Alright, just checked my time. It looks like I'm about 10 minutes, so I need to get, uh, pick this up a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to go over this uh, in big detail. It's just a standard, uh, simple structure I built. Um, depending on you know what yours is, whatever the fuck, uh, it will probably be different. But we're using a 4x4 main platform with two on the side. 
two stacker plates and an anchor. Uh, you want to go three high is my recommendation and no shorter than that. You can go more spacing between your floors but I wouldn't go any less than three. One because your block detectors there is a time lag between the, the time the signal is sent and the time the signal is received up top of at least the two decks. Um, again depending on the height and uh, all that good shit. And this here is something we'll work out in part three and something you'll have to work out depending on your structure too will depending on uh, the place of the block detectors but anyways I recommend three because it works out good it gives you plenty of distance to kind of walk around and not feel crowded and when you get to the top three is a good number also because you can roof it over and the anchor block stops right here below the pulley so you have the pulley or the anchor um, you have a crate crate and then your floor so three is a perfect number in between your floors so anyways I've already done some quick wiring up here to try to save some time uh, basically at the top anywhere you want to put your panel go in two blocks that way you can still reach it while you're on the elevator go four wide three high one two three put two um, lights a block and then a light two signs and two buttons now when you put your buttons in I highly recommend putting in your blocks in the back first put in two solid blocks with two repeaters on each side that'll separate your signal and also keep you from crossing any redstone and after you have these blocks in you can get to one but you can't get to the other so put these in first and then put these two blocks in throw your buttons on the front now I separated it green and red red is your break green is your switching and your power to the pulley which will go right up here um, and I, I'll, put, I'll put that in after I stop the video to save a little bit of time but anyways uh, put a second repeater in and then start your uh, your power and your switch on this side and then drop your redstone off this side for your break that'll separate the two so that when you push the button you don't have any crossing of redstone and this one lights up like it should and these switch like they should and I'll show you over here what we do uh, the first signal is separated with the break run it down throw in uh, make sure you use repeaters uh, as much as you need to to get this distance and here's your inverter and your flip-flop and let me turn the, uh, my light mod on because I'm not going back to sleep again fuck that shit um, so anyways you got your inverter and your flip-flop your flip-flop contains a glass block and a solid block like we learned in the first part I'm not going over this again and anyways your flip-flop and that sends your signal up to the top and this signal here make sure that one of the wires crosses over your your brake light so that it shows up there and then on top of the structure remember I told you the brakes have to go over top of the pulleys not the gearboxes so uh, drop a couple blocks up here some redstone uh, check in here make sure you may need a repeater on yours uh, if it doesn't work always look always look in the the wiring to see if you need a repeater and make sure that the signal is getting where it should because if it don't it won't work and you'll be pissed off and wonder why now the green side the green side is one is your power and is also your your uh, uh, your fucking switch your switch for the up and down now so how that works is on top below these two green blocks here and we learned this in part two underneath here are the lighted blocks you'll build the redstone on one side leave it open put a repeater one block down with a torch that way when it switches you've got power on one side and when it switches back you have power on the other again it's in part one I'm not gonna go over that part again your signal will come out and it will go two ways one will go to the power supply which is your water wheel to turn that on and off and I've got it just about wired in I just need to throw one more piece and I actually need to put the fucking water wheel in which I'll do in just a second and the second part comes down comes down to the floor got to repeater just to make sure I've got enough power it comes out of our flip-flop inverter it, it looks different but it's not all I did was just run this end uh, this side out put my inverter on the end of that block that way I have a charge line there's my inverter with the block and the glasses out and make sure you don't forget your torch and that will flip-flop your power around so right now we have working switches but no power because I don't have the water wheel hooked up but as you can see 
the block breaks over there, the brake is off, it flashes and it comes on. Sometimes it'll blink twice. I haven't quite figured that out. I think I got to use the monostat back there to get that to go solid one time and not blink twice. So if you're getting double blinkage, wire this into the back of the monostat first. And we'll go over that in just a second. I'm going to build that right here next time I fire the video up. And the water wheel will be done. And we'll go from there. So hang tight. Okay, I didn't feel like pulling a water wheel in. The, uh, the big windmill thing was a lot quicker and a lot easier. Uh, just remembering, you know, your power going all your directions the right way. This is the rest of the green line. I threw one more piece of redstone in. You can put it on any one of the main gearboxes before the split. Uh, I recommend putting it down here a little bit. That way you've got plenty of room below to put in uh, all your wiring and all your switching. So that's what I did there. So now we should actually have movement on the elevator. So, let's check it. We got the brake on. Let's take the brake off, and it should come up. See, we have power. It's not going to stop the floors because we don't have the detectors in. We'll put them in later, probably part three. Uh, like I said, the, uh, the uh, monostat switch we'll put back here, and we'll take this out, and when I fire the video back up again, we will be at that point. So, again, hang on. I'm trying to speed the video along to keep it uh, within 20 minutes. Okay, now we're back. This is what we have. I took the wire from the brake. I ran it into the uh, monostat. And I also built the uh, detector boxes to separate the signals from the up and the down. Watch from part two. You know what I'm talking about. Um, this is how it's built. If you didn't watch part uh, one, real quickly, you need to separate the signal from your block detectors. So it shuts one side off and detects the other one going down and vice versa coming up it shuts off the other one and detects uh, one come when it comes back up so basically all that is is um, two detector blocks you don't see nothing in there because it's got redstone uh, and then the other one just has one piece of redstone so when power is applied to it it throws redstone out here and shuts the other one off and that works with a torch and this comes off of your uh, your main switch. Your selector switch comes out, runs into your flip-flop. After your flip-flop, at any point before it goes up to uh, your lighting system and your power, cut a line off and bring it over here to this structure. Walk your redstone up, drop a block on top of each detector. You have to build it off this because otherwise you'll actually try to put it in the detector. Throw your redstone down. That way when you, uh, you select your switch, as you can see right now, we are selected in the up position. So in the up position, and I'm going to just look over the top, the one on the right, it will detect all the detectors on the right. So now when we flip to the down position, and it switches back over, now we're going to pick up everything on the left position. You see now the redstone is gone, and the redstone is over here. And we have the two separated going down. This uh, for the up, and this for the down. I think that's what I just said. But anyways, we'll figure all that out in part three. Uh, so up to this point, you should have a working elevator with a with a brake. So if you take the brake off, the elevator should move. And if you hit the brake, it should stop. Don't worry about the detectors not picking up nothing yet. I just did that. Hit the brake, it should move again. Hit the brake, it should stop. So if you're at that point, good job. You've done a wonderful job because it took me a long time to figure this out with many other videos I want to make a video that people could understand and follow very easily that's why I'm using a very um, generalized texture pack so you can see everything really good it's kid 64 by the way and like I said this is the point we're at right now and part three we will actually wire in the detector blocks and the side lighting and the switches to bring all that up here so that from any floor you can change directions. You've got lighting to see which way it's going. If you're out on one floor and you come back, and shit, I want to go up instead of down, you can switch it and all that good shit. So hopefully this stayed under 20 minutes. I'll know when I begin to render. And thanks for watching. Get your ass over and watch part three, part one. Rate, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Later.